Welcome back to the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. As always, I am Jack, and today I'm joined by Charlie. How are you, Charlie? I'm good, mate. Hi, how are you? I am fine, I'm fine. And we have a special guest replacing Calvin um, today. So I've got a third <laughs> member. It is our star striker from the USA, Alexa Coyle. So how are you, Alexa? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no worries, it's um, we're really happy to have you on. So um, anytime we have a guest on the podcast, we ask some questions to get to know them. So we're going to start off with that. And first of all, Alexa, how did you fall in love with football? Or should I say soccer? How did you fall in love with um, football? Yeah, well, at a really young age, um, my mom and my parents just put me in lots of sports. Um, and so I've just played it from a young age. And then as I kind of got older, um, I just particularly loved football and soccer in the United States um, and that's just the sport I chose to continue pursuing so um, I think it was also just the love of the sport combined with like being on a team I think I loved that and a lot of my friends we were all on the same team so I was really fun growing up and um, made me love the sport even more so that's good so um Compared to other sports you played, was there any other sports you played sort of growing up? I mean, this sort of answers a question we had later on, but now that you've mentioned it, um, was what other sports did you play growing up and what made you choose football over them? Yeah, so when I was a really young age, I actually like did gymnastics. I tried some dancing. Um, I was a soccer player. And then I actually was also a competitive downhill ski racer. And I actually uh, stayed, I was did both of those sports until about 16 years old so for a while I wasn't sure which one I wanted to continue pursuing and then um, when I was 16 I decided I wanted to uh, just solely focus on football and then that's when I just just solely focused on that but for most of my um, kind of childhood and growing up I was a dual sport athlete with downhill ski racing and soccer so or football. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. So obviously um, in Montana, you have the weather for it, for skiing in the winter. So it must be good. I'm, I'm surprised you should have joined up with Team USA at the Winter Olympics in Beijing. I uh, know, I know. Actually, a cool story. One of my um, roommates at the national championships when I was 16 years old was on the Olympic team. Oh. Um, so it was really, really cool for me to see her um, competing on the TV at the Olympics. And I'm you know, consider her a friend and we, you know, we're roommates together. So that was really cool to see. Oh, that is amazing. That is amazing. So um, next question for you is who was your favorite um, soccer player growing up? Ooh, that's a good one. I love Carly Lloyd. Um, and I just have such a strong memory. I wasn't super young, but I don't know if you guys remember the World Cup final that she scored a hat trick. And that's a game that's just like ingrained in my memory. And I've read her book and I've just, I've always really respected her as a player. And I think, especially the later end of her career, she changed to center forward and did that so seamlessly. And um, so I've always enjoyed her growing up. I also was a fan of Abby Wambach, just like her tenacity as a center forward. Um, so I definitely loved, like I've followed the U.S. women's national team quite a bit growing up. Um, and then naturally, I mean, you love me a ham, although I was young, like I don't really remember her era, but just looking, seeing kind of replays of uh, her time. She was an incredible player. So I'd say those three players. Yep. And obviously the U.S. women's national team have won the World Cup like quite a few times. They're the record holders. So what was your first sort of memory of the U.S. women's national team at a World Cup um, in terms of like you watching it and sort of realizing how good they were? Yeah, honestly, that is a good question. I think it might have been that World Cup that I'm describing. Like, that's the one that just immediately comes to mind um, where I was just, like, got really invested in following them more because I think at a younger age when I was a multi-sport athlete, I was kind of, like, into following all of them where I started more focusing just on soccer. I got more invested in watching the game, so... Yeah, yeah, I think like for me, the first time I sort of remember how good America was was um, at the World Cup in Germany. So that would have been quite a few years ago. 
And I was annoyed because they beat Germany. Like, I'm a big <laughs> fan of the German women's national team. And I was really annoyed because I thought, I really wanted to see Anja Mittag win a World Cup. And then America sort of uh, prevented that from happening. But yeah. Japan, I think I think it was Japan that ended up winning it that year, though. So it was a, quite an interesting one. That I was shocked that the US didn't win because I think Japan were sort of underdogs. So, yeah, it was an interesting tournament. That, But that's the first one I can remember, US women's national team. So next question for you is, what um, did you have a, like, club when you grew up like where, where you were growing up and um, did you support a football team or wasn't there any sort of local ones about that you did but obviously there's not many big MLS teams nearby so like did you support a team yeah you know honestly I would say when I was a young girl I was mostly just following like the U.S. women's national team um, I would say as I've gotten older and even come over here I particularly started to follow a lot more of like international football and really gotten invested in that, which I've really enjoyed. Um, but yeah, I would say not, I wasn't super invested in one club as a young girl and growing up, mostly just the national team. Um, so. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I, a lot of like players that I've spoke to from America have said the same, like, and, and that goes to like, um, if you ever hear from interviews from male American players as well, they say the same, that they were more interested in the national team than they were like club football as yeah. well so I, think, I think it's really interesting um so next question for you is what is the football culture like in your home state of montana obviously i don't think montana has an mls team that i'm aware of um so what's the football culture like there is there uh, more popular sports um in montana than football like american football or ice hockey or anything like that yeah um i mean montana is one of the least populated states in the u.s although one of the largest states in terms of in terms of landmass. So, honestly, it's not a huge uh, culture um, around soccer or football. I would say it's just a pretty equal balance of a lot of typical sports. Definitely American football. Definitely winter sports are pretty popular um, because we have two mountains within an hour of my hometown. Um, but in terms of sports it is just being less populated it's um it's hard to get on get to playing at a really high level within montana so growing up i actually had to like travel all over the country with my team i played on to um play against tougher competition um so that's something i've really enjoyed being here is just the culture around football and how passionate everyone is about football um being one of the main sports so that's been a very um fun aspect of being here for me that is good i think it's interesting like how different players from different parts of the u.s sort of speak about because when i spoke to gabby from a youtube channel obviously coming from florida they have two big mls clubs there so you know it's more of a thing in florida and the same like in california they've got the big los angeles teams as well and in new york they've got two MLS clubs as well with New York City and New York Red Bulls. So, you know, it's it's different in different parts of the country. That's really interesting to hear. So a final question for the um, getting to know you part is obviously um, the college football system within the US is like a world leader in terms of developing the women's game and um, obviously creating talent. So what was it like to be a part of that system for you? Yeah, I mean, it was an incredible experience. And kind of, as you mentioned in the US, like every young girl that plays soccer like that's usually your goal is to play college soccer like that's the next step after you finish up high school after you're 18 and so it was an amazing experience and it's just really unique in the sense that like you get to go play really competitive football while also getting a very good education and then also like being immersed in that college experience and environment around so many like-minded people and you have your teammates and there's also like lots of events going on and obviously American football is a big thing so other sporting events and clubs and different things you can join so it's just overall a really fun experience and just kind of tying in multiple different like aspects um but yeah it was an incredible experience for me and um definitely four years of my life I'll always remember so and definitely developed me very strongly as a football player um so yeah yeah, that's really good. I think I've, I've spoke to some like in many like other American players like about that and they, they have said the same. And obviously there's ones outside America, the Jamaica goalkeeper, Sydney Schneider, she's American but declared for Jamaica. She's been the same with that um, as well. So I think it's really interesting to hear about how good the system is. And it's interesting because obviously coming from like a European point of view, like following German and Scottish football, 
women's football. We obviously, it's more through like academies and within a club structure instead of at college. So it's really interesting to hear how different it is. And I think it's great because America does so much for the women's game and it's really good to see. So I'll pass you on to Charlie now um, and he's going to ask you a bit about um, Hibs and then do the listener questions as well. Yeah, so Alexa, awesome. what what brought you to Hibs? How did that, how did that um, process come about? Yeah, so um, just going back, I finished my uh, college career in May of 2021. And so I had always known I wanted to play professionally and I knew that was the next step I wanted to take. And so basically my agent started reaching out to teams abroad and um, Hibs was actually the first team to come back. And then I met with Dean and the process just moved pretty quickly and just seemed like the right fit kind of in all ways. And so basically within a week of speaking with him, I made the decision to go for it. I signed my contract officially a few weeks later, and then I was here within another few weeks after that. So it moved really quickly, but um, in the best way, I think it just all worked out pretty seamlessly. So, yeah, that's cool, um, and that's cool to hear that you know, how's the first club to to reach out? That's that's really cool. Um, so when you first arrived at Hibs, Alexa, what did you make of the the club culture and the history? Obviously, we are you know, one of the most successful women's teams in Scotland and we've played in the Champions League as well. So what, as a, as a newcomer, what did that, what did that feel like to know that your club that you're coming to has got a lot of history? I mean, that was one of the um, factors that definitely made Hibs really interesting to me is just the history and the historic nature behind the club. And kind of like I touched on, that's something that I've really enjoyed about being here is just the passion behind soccer and football. And you can just really feel that, historic kind of pride that the club has and so I've definitely I noticed that from the start and um something I've really enjoyed and like I love going to the men's games as well um right up the road for me actually so um it's it's been really really cool part of the experience and I'm I'm guessing you want to play in the Champions League for Hibs while you're here I mean that would be awesome definitely <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So you made an instant impact, Alexa, when you when you joined Hibs and you scored on your Hibs debut against Kilmarnock in the League Cup. So what were your feelings stepping up to take the the penalty kick, and what was your how did you feel when you scored? Yeah, I mean, of course, I was so pleased to be able to score in my debut. And um, in terms of just stepping up to take the penalty kick, I was like, this is nothing like I wouldn't do back in the states. But obviously, it had particular meaning just being my first game as a Hib and. Also, our first Scottish Cup game, I knew getting the first goal that early on in the game was just important for us to secure those three points. So, um, but yeah, in the moment, I was just focused on getting the job done, but it definitely was um, special to be able to score on my debut and help the team get those needed three points. So, yeah, that's cool. And then um, I think a few weeks later, after you joined, you, you know, we're playing at Easter Road, you see it in the picture I've got here so what was that night like at Easter Road playing against Hearts our biggest rivals winning 3-0 and you scored so sum up that evening for us yeah I mean definitely when I'd relive that was pretty incredible evening and talk about like the historic nature of the club and just the passion behind football here and I'd say like that was the one of the first moments that I like really really felt that to look up and see that many fans in the stands and be playing at that stadium um, and just the environment. And you could just feel the energy of just how big an event that was and how special it was. And then to be playing our rivals, um, it was a really surreal experience. And of course to score a goal was even more incredible and just hear the roar of the crowd. And just to really play in that environment was a once in a lifetime for sure. Mm, Hopefully yeah, not, but it was <laughs> one I'll always remember. <laughs> yeah, and uh, me, Jack, and Calvin, our other podcast member, were there, and it was just amazing to see so many people get behind the team and see so many young girls there as well with their parents, and just you know, hopefully the next generation of uh, young footballers coming through. And so moving moving uh, forward to to Sunday, um, Sunday's the third Edinburgh derby of the season. Um, so what do you make of the fixture in terms of the tradition and the rivalry? You've already touched on it briefly, but what was it like playing at Tyne Castle on the reverse fixture as well? Yeah, I mean, again, similar feeling of just you could feel the energy of the uh, 
just unique occasion and being able to play in that stadium. And again, like the rivalry and um, we had lots of Hibs fans out supporting too, which was pretty great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was great to be able to play in that type of environment. And again, just with the rivalry, it uh, makes it that much more special. So um, that was very cool as well. Yeah. And I think a question that just came to me as we've been speaking about playing in, in different stadiums. So what, as a, as a, women's team Alexa what does it mean to you that you get to play in sort of the men's stadiums that you know usually you know you're playing at Livingston or you know other places but what does it mean that in the bigger games obviously we're playing at Celtic Park soon as well so how how does that feel for you as a professional that you get to play at some of these big stadiums where you know Celtic Park's got 60,000 seats so how does that feel that you'll be playing on pitches like that? I mean really really special and I think particularly because from my understanding, this is really the first time that that's ever happened. And so I just feel really grateful to be able to be a part of that. And I know these are big steps for the women's game. So I think just being a girl that's grown up playing soccer for so long and to be seen and being a part of these kind of big monumental steps for the women's game is really impactful. Um, And then I think similar to how I felt Easter Road, I think every time we play in these big stadiums, it's just a surreal moment too of just kind of the hard work you've put in since a little girl being on these big stages and these big stadiums in front of big crowds it just it feels really just special and like a lot of your hard work has paid off for moments like that to be able to play just in big um, venues in front of big crowds and obviously for the club I am so um, just surreal for sure. Yeah no absolutely and finally Alexa what's been your favorite moment in a hip shirt so far? Oh, that's hard. But honestly, I think Easter Road, (laughs) the Easter Road game, um, that was just, it really was a surreal night from start to finish. Um, Mm. So I would say that game. Yeah, and you'll be looking forward to playing there next week against Partick Thistle as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, we're looking forward to that as well. So we're going to move quickly into our listener questions. Um, So we've we've had some responses on Twitter and Instagram. Um, So the first question comes from, our friend David, and he asks, have you tried haggis yet? I have tried haggis. <laughs> um, first time around, I tried it pretty traditionally, just like haggis, neeps, and tatties. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, yeah. Not much extra with it. I, I, I didn't really like it, to be honest, but then I tried it a second time. Actually, our team chaplain, Katrina, so giving her a shout out on here, made it in like a casserole type thing. And it was, it was so good. So um, I'd say maybe I like it now, but like in certain ways it's made. Um, So yeah. (laughs) No, that's cool. And uh, next question comes from Mel Clements on Twitter. And um, the question is, who's the best baller, Rapino or Alex Morgan? I'm going to go with Megan Rapino just with the word choice he used because she is just <laughs> unbelievable with the ball. Mm. But Alex Morgan is unreal as well. She is so fast and strong and just kind of that like go getter striker. But I'm going to go with Megan Rapino on that one. Okay. So, say uh, another question from Mel Any words from America that you've ditched to use the Scottish word instead? Oh, that's a good one. Well, obviously, football. Um, so I ditched soccer. I tried to for football. Um, in America, we call it like a soccer field. So here it's a pitch. Yeah. America cleats. Here it's boots. <laughs> um, so a lot of lingo like that. I've in terms of around the game, I've had to kind of ditch. Um, and then there's definitely just some Scottish lingo that I picked up on um, that I I find myself using sometimes, and I'm like. Well, I just, <laughs> I just use that and I would not say that in America. Um, so it's been fun kind of learning the different lingo here. <laughs> mm. uh, another question on Twitter, this one comes from Kelsey Craig and she asks, what was the best thing about scoring in the Derby Easter Road? I think just the excitement, the celebration and like the excitement I felt and then celebrating with the team and just to hearing the, the roar of the crowd and just in that stadium, it was it was pretty unbelievable. So I think the celebration and just hearing the crowd. Yeah. Um, So we've got two more questions 
both from Instagram this time. Uh, first one's from Lewis Connor, and he asks, who is your favourite US women's national team player and why? Um, as I touched on earlier, I know she just retired, but Carly Lloyd. And um, I've read her book. And so I think that paired with just like the player she was, she would just always put her head down, worked so hard. And um, I just really respect her as a player and kind of her mentality throughout her career. Um, and I just think she was an unbelievable player as well. So just a player I kind of respect all around as a footballer and outside of football. So I'd say her. Mm. And last question comes from Vari on Instagram, and she asks, what's been your best goal this season? Ooh, that's a hard one. I would say that my header goal against Hearts at Easter Road, um, that was one of my best goals, I would say. Honestly, my goal this weekend, my second goal this mm. weekend was one of my better ones as well. So, um, but hey, as a striker, any goal is a good one, so... <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So I'll just pass you over to Jack to wrap us up. Yeah, so um, just one more thing, Alexa, before we wrap up is what is your message to the fans that are thinking about coming on Sunday? Um, and what would you say to any fans that maybe haven't been to a women's game yet and are thinking about coming for the Derby? Well, first, for the fans that are and have supported us, just thank you so much because it really means the world. And I know, like, seeing the fans that do support us, it means so much and I think is really more motivating than you would even realize um and then for fans that are thinking about it I really encourage you to come and like I said it means a lot to us and for just the occasion to being a rivalry and um just to support the women's game and see what it's about I think you would not regret coming so yeah I've got to echo that obviously I um, come to the games quite regularly so I've got to echo that that it is, it is good. Um, it, it's a good atmosphere. It's good to see the team um, do well. So I would say the same as you. Um, come along and you'll you'll get hooked. So there you go. I think I've seen a lot of people that, you know, I have I used to go, obviously, because I go to the games a lot. I see a lot of people that never used to come to the games. After the Derby Easter Road, they started coming through to Livingston for the home games more regularly, which is really nice to see. So, Alexa, um, just before we let you go, can you tell people where we can find you on social media? Um, if any of the fans that don't know you yet want to follow you on Twitter or Instagram, um, you can just tell you where they can find you on there. Yes. Yeah, so my um, handle on Instagram is at Alexa Coyle underscore. And then on Twitter, I believe it's at Coyle Alexa. Um, so yeah, I'd love if fans want to follow me. Um, you can find me there and um, yeah, so. Uh, brilliant. So um, thank you so much again to Alexa for joining us. It was brilliant to have you on and speak to you about football in the US and also about Hibs um, and obviously best of luck um, for Sunday. I'll be there um, cheering the team on. Hopefully we can give the Jambos a good scene to again. So uh, yeah, that, that, that basically concludes our interview with Alexa. Um, keep your eyes peeled for more stuff. Um, myself, Charlie and Calvin will probably be back on Monday with our usual um, podcast review and all the weekend action. But until next time, glory, glory to the high bees. Yeah.